Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a test called Manitol Salt Agar, or MSA. So what is this agar? Well, first of all, it has two things that are very important embedded in the agar itself. One of those is the sugar alcohol called mannitol, and one of the things that MSA will tell us is whether or not bacteria are able to ferment mannitol. The second thing that it has is a very high concentration of salt. In fact, the salt concentration in mannitol salt agar is 7.5%. Now, in this same week that we do MSA, we also do 6.5% salt broth. Now, I mentioned in this video that 6.5% salt broth, or just the 6.5% salt, is still a very high salt concentration and enough salt to inhibit the growth of most bacteria. Well, for a mannitol salt agar, it's 1% higher than that. It's actually going to be 7.5% salt. And this high salt concentration is going to be able to inhibit the growth of many species of bacteria more so than would the 6.5% salt broth that we discussed in a separate video. Okay, so those are the two things, sugar and salt. Now, as we mentioned, the salt inhibits growth. So the first thing that we always check for in a mannitol salt plate is for growth. And we see three examples right here, three examples of what we see in the left two, so Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis, is that these organisms are growth positive. And all we do when we're classifying whether or not there's growth is we just look for colonies on the plate, obviously. Okay. And in both of these, there's going to be colonies on the plate. Here's another view up here. Uh, you can actually see in this case, they did a zigzag streak on each half of the plate. So there's organisms on the right side here, organisms on the left, and these are both going to be growth positive. In contrast, over here, we have Micrococcus luteus. This does not grow on mannitol salt because Micrococcus luteus cannot survive high salt concentrations. In fact, other organisms like Streptococcus will also not be able to survive at such a high salt concentration. And it's also worth mentioning that Staphylococcus organisms are very good at growing on this medium. So one, always check for growth first. If there's growth, then we can ask whether or not the bacteria ferment mannitol. And here's the thing we do. Colonies that can ferment mannitol will appear yellow, and so we would classify those as mannitol positive. So in this one over here on the left down here, which is Staphylococcus aureus, we obviously see that there's growth. Uh, this plate was done using the streaking for isolation method, but the agar turned yellow, and that has to do with the fact that mannitol is fermented to acid end products, the pH indicator is phenol red, and so when acid end products are produced from the mannitol, it lowers the pH of the medium and turns phenol red yellow. And so if we have a yellow plate around the colonies, then we have a mannitol positive organism, which just means that they ferment mannitol. And so for our MSA, our full answer here, if we were classifying the results, would be growth positive, mannitol positive. All right? But what happens if we have growth and it turns this sort of rosy pink color? Well, it's still growth positive, but in this case, it's a mannitol negative reaction for Staphylococcus epidermidis. So colonies that cannot ferment mannitol will appear pink, sort of a rosy pink like you see in the middle here. And again, we would classify those as growth positive, mannitol negative. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, and this is very similar to McConkie agar, if you have negative growth, so there's no growth on the plate, you cannot say that the mannitol reaction is negative. Okay? If there's no growth in the first place, your mannitol reaction usually put one of three things, either Na for not applicable, unknown, or inconclusive. And the reason is because this organism, Micrococcus luteus, either does ferment mannitol or it does not, but we cannot tell based on this test because there's no growth in the first place. If it managed to grow, we would be able to tell, but it can't survive the salt, so we can't actually determine the mannitol reaction. You would have to do another test to determine that, and most likely the best one would be a carbohydrate fermentation with a durum tube. That would be the best test to determine whether or not an organism that's growth negative here could actually ferment mannitol. But just from this test, we have to say mannitol unknown or inconclusive or Na. All right? And let's conclude this just by looking at a summary flow chart here that can actually help you determine the results of your mannitol salt agar. 
the first question you always ask is, is there growth? Going here, if there's no growth, like we see on this plate, then it's growth negative. And for the mannitol reaction, we're forced to say inconclusive, unknown, or not applicable. But if there is growth, so we have a growth positive organism, we then have to ask if there's mannitol fermentation. If the area around the colonies is pinkish red or that rosy pink color, then our answer is no, and we have a mannitol negative organism. So over here, if we saw this on mannitol salt agar, this would be growth positive due to the colonies that are zigzagging, but mannitol negative due to the pink. But if there's growth and the color is yellow around the colonies, then our answer is yes, we do ferment mannitol, so we'd be mannitol positive. So these organisms over here on the right half of this plate would be growth positive, mannitol positive. All right? So this is our summary of the mannitol salt agar. Hopefully this test makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.